and welcome to Girls With Goals. A little bit later on, we're gonna be joined by Orla Hopkins, a fitness guru and a businesswoman who was in with me earlier this week talking about all things to do with hormonal health. But first, I'm delighted to welcome my guests this week. Michael Fry and Denise Curtin are here, my colleagues from Maximum Media. Woohoo! it's gonna be a fun yeah. episode. It's so gonna be, to be here. Yeah, <laughs> very excited to have you in. I suppose I wanna explain a little bit about why I chose the two of you specifically this week, and it is because this week we're, we're talking about colleagues and we're talking about things that colleagues do in an office environment that piss you off. Um, but first off, we're gonna start with our game. It's called Six Words or Less, and it's for any of our listeners and our viewers who may not know who you are. So you have to describe yourself in six words or less. And Denise, you've been on a rake of times. So let's go to Michael Fry first. Okay, great, it gives me time to think. <laughs> so six words or less. Six words, I, yeah, I struggle with this one because I, when I was thinking of it first, I started doing the interview thing. So I was gonna be like, I'm punctual, I'm a people <laughs> person, and that's two words. Uh, no, I am, um, I would say I'm neurotic. I would say I'm weird. Um, but I'm also open, friendly, and warm. And that's oh, how, yeah. that took like a lovely turn that really I wasn't great. expecting. I was like, neurotic, and what was the second word you said? Weird, I think, yeah. Weird, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was just gonna continue, like, dangerous, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like what is coming next? <laughs> Setting the tone. Uh, we've never had the word neurotic before, ever, in 76 episodes. So. Wow, okay. Wow. Yeah, congratulations. A girl's a gold milestone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when we get a word that we've never had before, mm. yeah. So. What's the weirdest word you've ever gotten? Is it that one? Um, no, I mean, I definitely like the fact that it's never been used before, but people, I find that people find it hard to describe themselves and obviously you want to display yourself in a positive light so there's not a huge amount of negative like negative words so whenever we do get kind of and i'm not saying neurotic is negative but it's definitely on the spectrum of less positive than honest and all that kind of stuff everybody says that they're honest and loyal that's oh, I'm loyal, babe. <laughs> don't say loyal denise yeah. <laughs> give me your six words there hon no i've done this quite often yeah. so I'm starting to struggle to find <laughs> new words to describe myself so I'm going to go real common white girl here and I'm going to say I'm chatty loves to party and open Okay, you're both open. Mm -hmm. Both open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I'd like to think that people can come and talk to me and confide in me about stuff so I'd That's like nice, think, yeah. yeah. So if you were closed what would that look like? I feel stern and just not uh, interested in other people's problems okay. or things like that. I don't like think that. I'd be here if I wasn't open. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about You wouldn't about be myself. a girl with goals. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, speaking <laughs> of you being here, Michael Fry, for anybody who doesn't know, you work with Joe.ie. I do, yeah. So tell us about how you kind of got into the realm of work that you do, or firstly, tell us what it is that you exactly do. Okay, so I am, my job title is Junior Social Creative, mm -hmm. uh, and basically what I do is I run the Instagram and I seed content on Joe. Okay. Uh, but also I'm writing a bit of comedy at the moment, I have a show we're going to do probably bi-weekly at this point, uh, it's, it's called Big Dirty Fridays. And that's after my handle on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't come from anywhere. I just saw that nobody had taken Big Dirty Fry on Twitter. And I was like, that is mine. I'm having that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I do right now. Uh, yeah. In terms of how I got into it, it was, yeah, really kind of random in that I, I just started doing it in my bedroom. The whole, you know, sketches, things like that. Because I was always a Twitter fan. Yeah. And you are big on Twitter, aren't you? Twitter is kind of your medium. So I love Twitter. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's a rolling news service. But also I use it like as like a social network because that's what it is because I've met lots of people from it and yeah. it's always really positive, really nice because you've already made a good first impression before you've uh, even met them. Yeah. And so you were kind of like recording yourself, I mean, would you say it's satire of course, but like maybe pawning yourself off as some people that didn't enjoy it that much. You would do like, not necessarily imitations, but you kind of maybe... You take the piss out of people, essentially, in the radio world sometimes. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of, there's an Irish radio voice. Mm. Uh, I worked in radio for yeah. seven years. I'm excited to hear this. It's just, I don't know, it's the way people uh, kind of slow down when they're talking. Absolutely. And the reason mm. people do that is so they can think of what they're saying next. So they're saying, welcome back to The Breakfast Show on News Talk 106, 2108. What we have next is that kind of thing. So <laughs> it's like, so true. So when they're saying 108, they're like, fuck, 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 what am I going to say next? Yeah. There we oh go. Oh my God, okay. I worked in radio for three <laughs> yeah. years as well. And when I was calling out the text number, I would do that. I'd be like, 
zero eight five seven. You know, I was slowing <laughs> it down so I could think what song's coming up next. Can I see it on the screen? You, you do it though. It Absolutely. is. Yeah, it is. And also, you're kind of like you're kind of trained to do it as well mm. a little bit, like in terms of the vocal training that you go through and, and stuff like that. Because there's something about like talking and then all of a sudden talking on when, radio, when you're live. So different. It just makes you freak freak out a little bit more. And it's not as if your words are stunted normally, but for some reason when there's a light on, like you get a little bit scared. It, it because you. dead air is the ultimate fear. Like and dead air is just mm, yeah. not acceptable. Like the world will end. Oh, everything. and you know that your program director will come firing through those doors. Yeah. Everything will just turn yeah. crazy. And so you got obviously like, I think you got a really positive reaction from the stuff that you were doing on Twitter though, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was kind of shocking because the one that really took off was I do one uh, that everyone knows is like the Derry London Derry sketch. Mm -hmm. And that uh, got retweeted by, I think it was Blind Boy first. Mm. And then it just seemed to go everywhere. And then suddenly I had Kevin Bridges, the comedian, saying, yeah. oh, these are great. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah that, was, that was great to get kind of, uh, like numbers don't mean a whole lot to me, but mm. it's the kind of people who like it. That, mm. that really matters to me. And when something like that, that you've done, that is kind of in the process of going viral or something that you are just about to release, like, do you freak out about whether or not it's gonna have any traction whatsoever? And then just say, for example, something that you're really proud of, but like maybe bombs. Do you think about like taking it down or does that ever enter your mind? Um, I used to do that. I used to, yeah. there's a curatorial aspect to Twitter where you can go through it yeah. and be like, okay, that didn't get that many likes or whatever. But now I'm kind of like, okay, I had fun making that. I mm. enjoyed yeah. saying that or, or writing that and I think that's funny. Yeah. So I'm going to keep it there because it's a reflection of me. But it is a lot of pressure as well, though, isn't it? Like, as in, if you're funny on Twitter, I feel like that's way more pressure than if you are maybe good on Instagram or something. Because, like, my Twitter, I actually think I have more followers on Twitter than I do on Instagram. But Twitter, for me, is just work. As in, I'm like, I'll, same. I'll retweet my episodes, I'll talk about what's coming up on the show, I'll tag the guests on, but I've never, like really commented on anything. I've never even really commented on news things when I was working as a journalist. So like, it's something that I find really, uh, like I just can't get involved in it from a point of view of, it's too judge. I find it too yeah, judgmental. I think I'm the exact same. I think on Instagram, I'm a lot more myself. Yeah. I think on Twitter, I'm almost afraid to comment on things as if my like opinion isn't valid enough, if you get me. Like I, yeah. I sometimes think that I don't know enough when I read other comments to like yeah. to like voice an input. And I'm also afraid as well of like getting backlash from other people because I feel like on Twitter as well, people can be kind of snarky in their comments. Yeah, they go for each other yeah. like. Yeah, I think it really depends on who you follow and what you're talking about. I suppose. Mm. I think you're, you're right to be like, if I don't know enough about something, I shouldn't say anything. No, yeah. Yeah. My, my whole thing is like, does this need to be said? Mm. Does it need to be said by me? And does it need to be said now? Uh, and if you don't fit those three things, like, don't bother. There's because... the other thing about Twitter is that there is a rake of people on it who are just trying to be funny, and that bothers yeah. me as well. Like, I mean, mm. I think you're funny, Michael, but I do think that there are lots of people on Twitter who are just trying to be funny, and that kind of bothers me. Yeah. Uh, whereby on Instagram, I don't know, like, yeah, people are kind of trying to be funny or something, but it's not the be-all and end-all. But I think Twitter, like you said, there's the ro uh, rolling news service side of it. And then there's the kind of comedy and trying to get retweets and trying to go viral side. Too much pressure for me, wouldn't be able to Too much it. pressure. I kind of treat Instagram, I mean, Twitter a bit like my CV, I almost think. Mm. It's all work that I've done. Yeah. Like, press drops that I get in. It's nice like, flick. that's all that it is. Yeah, mm. I kind of like that too. It's yeah. a little bit of LinkedIn vibes about it. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk more about uh, uh, Big Dirty Fry and stuff like that later on. But first off, let's get into why we're all here today. So we are here to talk about office life. And this kind of stems from a tweet that went out from the Joe account. Um, and I think I've sourced that it was Alan Lochnan. I was actually there the morning that this incident occurred. Oh my God, yeah. like yeah. ridiculous. So Alan Lochnan is our deputy editor. Um, Full-time deputy editor, part-time coffee monster is what I've kind of decided that he is because Christ alive. <laughs> he tweeted this thing, settle an office debate. Is it acceptable to heat up your coffee in the microwave? And one of those like inquiring emoji faces and a coffee emoji. Um, and the amount of slack that he got back for that. I think the overwhelming response was no, it's not okay, but it, it definitely caused a stir. Yeah. Excuse Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that my housemate heats up coffee in the microwave and I always wonder why he does it. And strangely enough, the reason he told me that he heats up coffee is because 
he, I'm like, we have instant coffee in the price. You can just make another coffee. But yeah. he said the reason he heats it up is because he's trying to like watch his caffeine intake. So he knows that like if he drinks three coffees, he's just drank three coffees. But if he goes and makes another one, he's like, have I drank like three and a half, four and a half? So it confuses him. Null and void argument. Because if you drink a cup of coffee and then by the end of it, like a third of the cup is left and that's cold and then you make another cup and then you leave another third of that cup left and then you make another cup and then probably if you put all of those cups together it's still only like one and a half cups of coffee. I know, I suppose this is just his strategic thinking so that he doesn't <laughs> look like a freak when he heats up his coffee. But then when I saw Alan Lochnan doing it in our offices with a takeaway cup, I was thinking... A take? That's... A takeaway cup? Oh my God, that's worse than I thought. Dangerous oh also, God. hazard, do not try that at home. Yeah. I was like, what is he doing? I know, yeah. Um, and also 76% said, no, you monster, and 24% said, yeah, obviously. So like, 26% of people think that this is an okay thing. Michael, what do you think? 26% of people are sick. Mm. Yeah, um, they are sick. That's what I think. Cold, there's nothing wrong with cold coffee. Mm. I have no problem drinking cold coffee. Maybe that makes me a monster. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think that's but a bit weird as well. <laughs> I think cold tea is weird. I wouldn't drink yeah. tea if it wasn't Well, there's warm. iced coffee. Yeah. But there's also iced there's... tea. But they're that's different. The... <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're not like beverages. leaving your shishy. <laughs> One third of coffee, go cold and then drink it. Like that's not an iced coffee. That's not an iced no. coffee. No, but if you pour, if coffee. you put some ice cubes in it, like it could be an iced coffee. I feel like no. That's making something positive out of. Yeah, a exactly. Situation. Exactly. Glass half full. I'm, tr I'm trying, yeah. but at the same time, it 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 started a, a bigger conversation about like weird things that people do in offices, and that was one of the weirder things that I had heard of in a long time. Putting coffee into um, a microwave, but I mean. There are so many weird things that I mean, people see, do. I mean, it office. doesn't affect other people. It's mm. just a weird thing to do. Yeah. yeah. You know, I worked with a guy who puts milk in with the tea bag no. and then pours water on it. That's weird. Which, nice. And he should be tried at the Hague. For yeah. That because that yeah. is disgusting. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that, is, that is an absolute weird flex. Like, that who is, does yeah. that? Can I ask, are we naming and shaming people? No, we're not. I feel like no. No, okay. that was, that was a previous GDPR right and place, everything. So, yeah. you know? GDPR, right. <laughs> <laughs> Although we did name Al Lachnan, yeah. 100%. Um, okay, so yeah, there was a few things. So I reached out to people to just talk us through maybe a few things that really bothered them. And I want to get your opinions on whether or not um, this affects you guys in a day-to-day -day basis. First off, I think it's important to note, we spend more time with the people that we work with in life than anybody else. I know, it's depressing. More time... <laughs> I love you, but it is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> more time than our family. More I was like, wow. More time than our friends. Like we really do. We're around each other a huge amount of time. Like Denise, me and you've been sitting beside each other for the last few days. days. For days. <laughs> and like this morning I walked in and somebody else is sitting beside me and like it feels it feels weird. weird. But also it feels like we have had like more conversation. I think I've spoken to you more this week than I've spoken to my boyfriend. Like, oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Easily. Yeah, I know. Um, but in saying that, you know, they do get to see the ins and outs of your person at times and you don't really realize it. So I think food is a huge issue in the office. So many people got in touch about things like making food in the microwave that can maybe disrupt an office. Mm. And fish was one of the main things that came in. Fish is, I am... Um... Why would anyone do that to other people? Is Coming from a woman who ate tuna yesterday, continue. <laughs> did you eat tuna yesterday? I ate, did. I ate tuna yesterday. I didn't heat Why it up in the microwave that? or anything. <laughs> but, um, so I put tuna onto a plate and then I heat up rice and then I put the rice onto the plate and then I like mash it up and then I have a tuna and rice situation. Do you know that it smell smells or do you just not care? <laughs> would be my thing with it. Like, and so I know tuna... Is it that you are just ignorant of it or do you just not are you just inconsiderate like I know the tuna smells but it doesn't smell like <laughs> think of your tuna bread number one you talk for a living but see it's your tuna as well it's, a, it's, it's tuna that you've made and you're conscious that it's there if you know yeah. what I mean if I came into the kitchen I was like it stinks of fish in here I don't like it <laughs> I just, or you know, when you open the dishwasher, you just get that waft of like. I, you know, fish. this is weird because, like, I'm not a germaphobe, but the thought of getting your tuna plate after you makes me feel a bit unwell. I'm sorry, yeah. there's a difference between having a little bit of tuna from a packet than having somebody like microwave smoked mackerel. Like, let's be <laughs> honest. Who does that, though? Need. Trying to shove a sturgeon into the again, microwave or something. I'm not, like. not going to name names, but like, I swear to God, people in this office do weird things with food. There's a girl over there. She's going to 
kill me. She actually messaged me this morning on Instagram because I put it up about what we were going to talk about. And she yeah. said, feeling attacked. And I was like, well, you do it. So she poaches eggs, right, in the microwave. Yeah, that's... And she puts it in a big old deep lunchbox full of boiling water. And then she pops the eggs in. Actually, like really good poached eggs come out. And she was trying to defend it. And she was like, but I contain them. I contain them. I keep them contained. And I was like, it's not about the egg that you get at the end of it, yeah. right? Yeah. It's about the fact that that poachy water goes down the drain and then when I'm trying to clean a cup a little bit of your egg residue yeah, of no. poached eggs yeah. gets up and yesterday she was trying to explain herself and she was cleaning at the same time and a bit of the poached egg flicked on somebody else like so, oh, <laughs> so see, it's not contained her poached issue. eggs were actually flying around the kitchen I think what people eat for their lunch tells you a lot about their lives yeah I think when I see people's lunches I'm like that's weird. I wonder you like that outside of the office. Like, what do you eat on a day-to-day -day basis? I think it is. I think it's a huge insight. And also, there's the other element of, like, food shamers in that, like, when you see somebody who is, like, 100% on a health kick right now and yeah. you're sitting there with, like, your cheesy chips and a bag of Monster Munch. And I feel shame. And that's not their fault. That's it's not, my It's fault. my thing, yeah. I'm projecting. But like, you know, or you have a green juice and you're eating just a full plate of salad and stuff like that. And then you're going to like, fuck off. And I'm opening my lunchbox next to someone else and they're like chopping up kale and I'm taking out my rice being like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good, not a good feeling it's at all. It's not a good feeling, but it yeah. is an internal thing that we, we bring upon ourselves. I'm very mm. self-conscious about what I would eat in the office. And that, really? Because like, I remember the, when I first got my office, the first office job I got, I was like, what do I eat for lunch? Yeah. Do I bring in a sandwich? Is that going to make a mess? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I got, I put it up on Twitter and I got all these kind of sarcastic answers. Like this guy was like, oh yeah, eat 12 boiled eggs. And I was like, that's, no, I'm not going to do that, obviously. That's <laughs> gross. Uh, <laughs> but, that was sabotage from yeah, him. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a genuine answer anyway. But like, yeah, no, I'm very, very, I, I hate the idea of people watching me eat as well. Right. Oh, I don't know, I just, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What's your go-to then? Like if you were having a brought in lunch? Probably a sandwich. A sandwich, say, okay. Because it's contained. You know. Do you ever see me getting slammed in the kitchen? <laughs> what do you mean I slammed? I get absolutely what? attacked. <laughs> like slammed as in like given out to. Why? But not even given out to. Teased, trolled. That's it. You get live trolled. Live in, trolled in, in the trolling. office because I have crackers, mm -hmm. little bit of cheese and pear. And everyone's like... <laughs> Pear. Yeah, chopped up pear on the cheese, is on that, the cracker. Is that a thing people do? Is that... Obviously not, okay. because <laughs> people are like, look at your one. Who do you think you are? It's an office lunch, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, this, number one, is really cheap. Yeah. And number two, I'm not trying to be fancy. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> crackers, cheese and pear. Sounds so fancy, Denise. It does. Every... It sounds like an appetizer. Or like, yeah. you know when you're at an event and they have like trays of things. Yeah, I know. Like, is yeah. that pear? It really does, but I eat loads of it because it keeps me full and it's really cheap. And that's kind of it. And it also tastes delicious. But I get slammed daily for that. <laughs> Do you think this is afternoon tea? No, I fucking don't. I just love this. But there's, a, there's a weird morbid curiosity. We're going to have to move on from food because we've literally been talking about food this entire time. But there's a weird <laughs> morbid curiosity about what other people bring in for lunch though as oh, well. absolutely. And as in like there are times when I've like hung back just to see what was happening next when someone like there's a few people in the office who are meticulous with their preparation it almost takes them their full hour to just prep and then mm. they have this food like plate of majestic food and then they walk off somewhere else to eat it but I literally have hung back just to see what are you going to put on next what are you going to do next with that like it's weird I'm into it that though. is weird is that a bit too weird yeah I think that's a bit fucked are up. you not interested when you see people preparing yeah, food yeah but I wouldn't I wouldn't hang, hang back, back and watch right? someone make their lunch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's Michael in finance, okay? He makes majestic lunches, <laughs> and I he always does. want to know what's coming next. He does. Sometimes it's beetroot, sometimes it's cheese. I just never know, mm. but it's delightful. Um, okay, so there's a few other things. Speaking of food, we're not going to move too far away from that, but the dirt of a kitchen in an office is something that was brought up a lot. So people not cleaning up after themselves. This is a huge issue. And for some reason, in offices, people feel like they don't need to clean up after themselves. Yeah. Discuss. I think it's because... They're like, this isn't my house. I like, have enough work to be doing anyway, so I'm just going to leave this chronically dirty plate that I've destroyed up here on the worktop for you all to see. It's disgusting, yeah. though. Like, it really is. What do you think? I think if... I think there's kind of, like, a weird grey area yeah. in that if there is an office cleaner, like, people seem to think that it's their job, but it's not. No. Yeah, like, no. you're eating stuff, like, put it in the dishwasher. It's not hard. 
you know what I mean? I know, and the so. thing is, like, especially if it's a if it's a bigger office, and obviously you're getting through like lots of dishes throughout mm. the day, and then there's the whole thing of trying to get in early enough so that you can get a cup because the cups just go and they're gone for the day, and you can't get them back. Um, and then people leave dishes on their desks and stuff. That's something that really pisses me off, to be honest with you. When people leave dishes on their desks and when people leave dishes on my desk, yeah. pisses me off yeah. so bad. That makes me really Somebody, annoyed Somebody, well. and again, not naming names, mm. left a cup on my desk yesterday and he specifically said to me, I'm not going to leave this here. And I said, that's really good to know. Thank you for letting me know that. I didn't see him for hours. Yeah. He was gone. And the cup was there just staring at me the entire day. And out of principle... I didn't put the cup back until, rightly so. until the end of the day because then I had to. Well, <laughs> I find that as well. You know, like all the cups pile up in the sink because everyone like makes a coffee or whatever in the morning and then the cups just start to like accumulate throughout the day. But I just think it's so funny that when someone comes to the kitchen, they're like, oh, there's no cups. Instead of just picking one up and washing it, they'd mm. like find a bowl or nearly a second lunchbox and fill it with water to drink out of. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just but think the, that's so in, insane. But this is where fish comes in. in that, like, there <laughs> might be fish in that sink and I don't want to drink fish water from a cup that was in the sink. So basically, me needs to clean. So yeah. If you have tuna, you clean. So you're telling me that my tuna residue could be in everybody's could cups of tea. Could be everywhere, yeah. Oh my God, tuna tea. I the never... nightmares that would be if you took a mouthful of coffee and there was a, I would go a bit home of fish sick. in it. 100% go yeah, home sick. I absolutely. would leave. I was about to say about the poached egg residue in your tea. I wasn't even thinking That's about it. That's not even that bad. Really? Poached egg is yeah. like a breakfast dish, so. That's fine. So you can pull it in your tea. No, but like it wouldn't be <laughs> as bad as tuna. Um, okay, we're going <laughs> we're going to take a quick break now. Um, earlier in the week, I was joined by Orla Hopkins in studio to talk about Hormone Health Week, which is happening next week. So have a listen. I'm joined now in studio by fitness guru and businesswoman Orla Hopkins. Orla, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks a million. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm excited to see you. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. It has. So we're going to talk about Hormonal Health Week. So this is kicking off on March 25th for anybody yeah. that doesn't know. And I want to get into talking about your journey with your own hormones yeah. and like essentially what it is exactly because I think a lot of Irish women are not confused, but I just don't think everybody talks about it as much yeah, as they do. No. But we'll get into that. But first off, just for anybody who doesn't necessarily know exactly what you what you do. So fitness guru and businesswoman is all encompassing. <laughs> so tell us what is your job? Oh, God, where do I start? Yeah. So I suppose um, on a day to day basis, I run um, a dancewear store along with my new brand, which is New Dimensions Activewear. So it's all fitness wear. But um, how I got to that place was I am a dance and fitness instructor um, coach, strength and conditioning um, you name it. And I do it. <laughs> and you're also you have quite a strong presence online as well. So you're on Instagram and you've got a, a massive following yeah. on Instagram yeah. as well. Did that kind of come after the business elements or yes. did that kind of start to gradually build? No, that came from actually the fitness end of my life. So after I had my first child, I decided to get into fitness competing. Um, I just felt that, you know, after being I was a dancer and gymnast my whole life and um, kind of felt a little bit lost mm. and was like, you know what, I kind of I want to challenge. And I just wanted to show every other working mum out there that they can do it. And I literally set up the Instagram for kind of support and knowledge and motivation. And it just kind of blew up. And so this was uh, bikini competitions, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like you were obviously putting your body through incredibly strenuous levels of training yeah, in order 100%. to get yourself kind of stage ready um and in terms of like hormonal health you you talked about it really starting to have an effect on you yeah. after your second child yeah. hunter was born um but during that time were you like kind of aware of your own hormones or i mean you have to be yeah. so stringent about what you're putting in your body Absolutely. anyway now i would have been um an athlete as a child mm. um as a teenager and always would have suffered quite badly um with hormonal health mm. but when I went for advice, I wasn't really given any proper advice at the time. Yeah. The same after my first child. Um, you know, I during my training, I would have been very, very strict on how I did eat and how I did train, but I would have always looked after myself. Mm -hmm. um, again, I would have suffered monthly with very, very kind of um, bad PMS. Uh, but I just put that down to be normal. Every yeah. woman that I spoke to was like, oh, yeah. I have that. So they either had it or they either didn't. Yeah. And then that would be the end of conversation. 
Yeah, and I mean, it, it's something that I think, and we've spoken about a little bit on the show, we had um, Maeve Madden on there a couple yeah. of weeks ago who's spoken very openly about PCOS, yes. which is obviously related to hormones and, and all of these kind of things that, you know, women have to deal yeah. with um, and that sometimes they do just chalk it up to, oh, well, I just had a, like a horrific period this That's month. That's it, and I mean... I work with girls, I mean, in our store, it's all women, and all of us would be like, oh, God, it's that time of the month again. Oh, you know, and it's like, just deal with it. And that's kind of what we're always, well, that's what I've been told my whole pretty much life. Yeah. Is like, you know, what? it's it's hard, but that's life, and that's what it's like just being a girl. But you know? after your second baby was born, you knew that something was, was really wrong. Absolutely. And so what happened then? So after I'd Hunter, I suppose possibly on my first, I... Didn't have, I wasn't as busy after I had Noah. You know, I, I definitely had more time to rest. I had more time to kind of look after myself considering I only had one child. Mm. When it came to Hunter, I um, literally, I was having a 10 day period. It was kind of happening every other, every 10 days. I wasn't really getting a break. Mm. I was so lethargic and um, I just wasn't feeling me. Mm. Um, and I spoke to other people and they were like, oh, you know, two kids now, this is tough. Yeah. And I just felt there was more to it. Right. So I went to my GP and initially I was told, you're over 35, you have two children, you gotta live with this. Heavy periods, that's what happens. But it wasn't just the heavy periods, it was the tiredness, the fatigue. Somebody like me who's normally so active, yeah. so um, full of energy. And um, I just knew there was more to it. And you said that it affected your mood as well. So like you were, Absolutely. you were, you were getting weepy, and, yeah. and like it was affecting you mentally as well. well. Completely. I mean, I definitely wasn't me. I was very weepy. I was emotional. Um, the slightest thing would set me off. Um, so kind of like it was kind of like I was suffering nearly PMS all month. Yeah. And um, I, when I did go to my GP, they had mentioned to me, um, you know, possibly could be postnatal depression, but I just knew. It wasn't that. Mm. I knew I wasn't um, in a, you know, in a kind of a darker place. I, um, I just knew deep down that it wasn't this. Yeah. So I actually sought kind of a second opinion, and they had mentioned to me about hormone health and hormone imbalances. And you know, even though I've studied the body my whole life, yeah. And I've been to doctors in my teenage years about kind of heavy periods and bad pains and cramping. This was never mentioned to me. Yeah. So I kind of delved into a bit more and I've been recommended to take this product, Clean Marine. Yeah. And it's kind of like you've been taking it now for 18 months yeah, or so. And half, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you said as well that you would just never go back, that it's that it's incredible, it's, that it's kind of I, changed everything. Exactly. And I never kind of felt um, that a product like this could help me so much. Yeah. But I suppose I wasn't looking after myself as much as I should have been. Right. In the sense that there was now two children, busy life. Um, setting up a new business. I definitely was neglecting my intake, probably in my foods, in my supplements, as much as I would always feel that I'm on top of it. Yeah. When I look back, I wasn't. And, and yeah. you know, it catches up on you. Well, this is the thing. And I think when it comes to like, even the word hormonal, right? Yeah. It's kind of a trigger word for, yeah. for women, I think. As in like, you know, if you're acting in any way, not the way that you normally would. Yeah. You know, there have been times that one would say, oh, are you hormonal or something like yeah. this? And it, it is put into a negative space. Uh, completely. And it's put into a place where, and people think that like, okay, so there's puberty and then there's menopause. These yeah. are like the big hormonal triggers that we go yeah. through. And actually there's five stages yeah, exactly. of like major turning major points. Major changes in your body. Of yeah. our body as yeah. women. And that's something that I found really interesting that I not necessarily didn't know about, but probably haven't really concentrated that's, that's on. That's what I was going to say. I mean, as much as we all kind of know, mm. we don't really think that they are major changes. Yeah. And I think you kind of feel, oh, I'll just sail through these stages. But I mean, actually Clean Marine have brought out a guide, a hormonal guide, and yeah. it's available in, in literally every pharmacy around Ireland. And I've been giving it, I coached um, young dancers, and I've been giving it to these dancers, I've been giving it to my niece to read, mm -hmm. because they were just kind of one-liners or pages of information that, as much as you have thought about this or read it before, you might not necessarily have taken it in and put it with, with this hormonal activity in your body. And there's some things in there that will just make you go, oh wow, if I change this, if I did that, you know, supplementing your diet, the, and then the products, the actual product itself, the supplements that are in it yeah. to help regulate hormonal activity, to help support your energy levels. I mean, I was really lacking my vitamin Bs. Yeah. It's, you know, what, the, what it contains is just phenomenal. And taking like two tablets a day 
to help you feel like yourself again it sounds a bit ridiculous. Yeah, but I mean, and the thing is, it's it's everything as well. Like, I mean, it's so easy to just say, oh, well, God, you know, I'm a bit hormonal or, or I don't yeah. know what's going on in my body these days. But like, when you really think about it, and of course, I'm no doctor. And if you yeah. do have any queries, like, yeah, do you go to your absolutely. doctor and kind of ask about what's happening in your body? But it affects everything. Like, the glands everything. affect everything. Everything from like your sexual, you know, oh, development completely. from when you're younger yeah. to your sexual appetite now. Yeah. Everything from, you know, PM. MS um, and then fertility and, and yeah. growth as well. Absolutely, Although I missed I mean, that one. <laughs> like myself. <laughs> missed it. Or my B12s when I was 15, but whatever. Um, but it just, it affects every single even part like of you. Even if you look at your skin, your hair, mm. your nails. And this is what I even say to the young dancers that I'm training. I'm like, girls, it's not just about, you know, your you know your period yeah. this is about like looking after you from the inside out and you know so many of them are suffering say with bad skin days and bad hair days and and you're saying you know supplement your body from your for your hormones mm. because that's literally what <laughs> this is what's running your body yeah and I think it's tr try and get that message across and to stop throwing the word oh she's just hormonal you know mood swings a moody teenager it's it's so unfair and that and that really triggers. If you keep telling a thirteen year old, oh she's a moody teenager, like yeah. what's that gonna do to her confidence? Exactly. I mean I think like the next time anybody says to anybody, you know, oh maybe she's just being hormonal, like, yeah, maybe Actually, I she am. Is. And let's talk about it, yeah. okay? So it's yeah. the endocrine system and it's my entire, entire body. body. So exactly. do you wanna know about how hormonal I am? Let's talk let's about talk it. Let's talk about it. I love it. I guarantee <laughs> they will just walk away. But I mean that's the thing. I think it's about normalizing it and making sure that it's a conversation that, for example, you know, you don't get to a stage in your life where you're really really starting to feel low and you're really yes. starting to feel, you know, I mean, of course, you know, there are different things that happen in people's lives, but if something doesn't feel right in your body, always go and seek, seek, seek something. something. Yeah. And I mean, and if you feel like, as for myself, my first kind of advice wasn't what I wanted to hear. Mm. I, Cause I, I just knew deep down, we know our bodies. I mean, yeah. as women, we know our bodies. And sometimes, yeah, we do ignore some certain signs, but for me, it was affecting my life in a hole as in I hadn't got the energy to exercise which was killing me because I love exercising. And it's a huge part you know, of a huge a, part of my mental yeah. health along with my fitness and my mm. heart health. So I was like I want to get back to being me and I knew there was something else. Mm. So I think it's so important for us women to really kind of don't just take that first answer, you know, and, yeah. and do take a second opinion and and talk about it. You know, I've spoken about this on my social media. The amount of women that have come back to me and say uh, I've been through there, I've been yeah. there. I've got that first opinion, oh, you're over 35, this is normal, you've had two kids, you're just tired. Mm. Yeah, we're tired, but there's something you can do about it. Exactly. And it's not always like other medications as well, exactly. you know, although yeah. it's incredible to talk about mental health and to yeah. talk about things like this as well. Like sometimes it is physically what's going on yeah. in your body and yeah. sometimes, you know. And that can obviously trigger off a mental health of issue. Course, I, mean, yeah. it, I mean, if you are feeling so low and so down, mm. you know, but the fact for me, this is hell, I can't, I can't describe yeah. how different I felt. And it was only after the first couple of weeks of taking it. And I mean, it's, for me, exercise is my kind of, my vitamin, yeah. you know, but when I wasn't able to exercise. That's it, yeah. You know, it's so, being able to put two and two together and then a year and a half later to be where I am. Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. And especially when you know how good exercising is for you, when you yeah. know the endorphins that it triggers in your body That's and it. you know that it will make you feel good, but then you get to a point where you're lethargic it, enough and you're like, oh, that you're I just can't. like, I'm better I off I know not. I will feel better, but I, but I haven't got the energy to get to that stage yeah. to make myself. That's exactly That's what happened to me. So like we were saying there, you know, it is really about knowing your own body and, and kind of if something doesn't feel right to look into it a little bit yeah. more. So Hormonal Week is happening March 25th yeah. um, and Clean Marine. And they're going to be like hosting a series of kind of events and pharmacies and things like this. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So that week they literally have um, pop-up events throughout Ireland. Yeah. They have a phenomenal um, hormonal guide which I spoke to you about there. And I mean the expert panel that are involved are unbelievable. Yeah. And if you do have any time to listen to Dr. Mary Ryan, she'll blow your mind. Okay. She is one person that when I hear her speak, I just want to listen to her all day long. How she speaks about our um, hormonal health, but not only that, about women in general, mm. our abilities, our capabilities. She's phenomenal. But um, I would recommend you all go pick up one of these guides for all stages of life. Yeah. And you will, you will, you'll, you'll, you're going to see it everywhere that week. <laughs> yeah, well, that's incredible. And again, it's, uh, you know, really important. And I, and I love talking to people like you as well, who like come out and kind of say these things and, and yeah. talk about their own personal experiences because it brings them back. It brings them yeah. back to us. And I think 
hearing about people who are in the public eye and who have a following talk about things that have affected them and their yeah. bodies, people go, oh, maybe it's this for me or maybe it's yeah. something different, you know, which is just eye-opening. Mm. So you were talking about, of course, this all kind of stems back to the amount of juggling that you do in your own life. <laughs> so you said that you have, you have a brand as well. And yeah. I want to hear about them because I've been promised some pants for the yes, last year so I'm so absolutely. excited so they're high-waisted workout pants high-waisted and um, workout pants which again stemmed from I suppose years of training yeah. and years of pulling up leggings yeah um, and they're squat proof squat proof and um, absolutely some fabulous colors so yeah new dimensions active and I will send you in we actually have a new launch next week of a new style okay so I will send you in all pairs oh, all colors and you can tell me what you think. I will tell you exactly yeah. what I think. Well, Orla Hopkins, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for really having Really appreciate it, of course. Okay, so we are back. I'm joined this week by my colleagues, Michael Fry and Denise Curtin. And we're talking about things that happen in offices that absolutely piss you off about uh, your colleagues, basically. So it's, a, it's an open forum and it's a truth zone. And we've already named and shamed a few people, which mm. um, is probably going to come back. But we've been speaking mostly about food and the kitchen situation. But we're going to move away from that now and really get into the work that we do. So one of the things that kind of popped up quite a lot from people who got in touch with me on Instagram was um, emails. So emails is something that obviously we all send every single day. We receive a bunch of them as well. But there's a few elements. I think there's, there's definitive email types of people. So there are a few people who maybe send an email and then you don't hear from them for a long time or, you know, like there's a little bit of politics involved in emails. And I think that there are key things that some people find irritating. I'm not going to say what I find irritating just yet, but is there anything that sticks out to you when it comes to emails that kind of bothers you, Michael? Yeah, so I worked for a uh a large kind of corporation before I worked here that had branches everywhere. And so there would be people you'd be in contact with that you'd never meet face, face to face. Yeah. And I remember receiving an email from someone who said, nice to e-meet you. Oh, that's and that, I, I sent it back, but I wanted to punch myself in the face <laughs> because <laughs> that's dreadful. I don't I know have, who invented that. But. I have 100% said that. Oh, I no. have. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I have to because sometimes I am like, Meeting Looking people. forward to meeting you in person or something. But I know, I've said it. Nice to e-meet you. I know, no. it's the worst. I've it said is, it. it's a nice, concise phrase, but also the worst. Think about what it actually means, embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> but without even realising no. it, you get into these little phrases that you never thought that would become a part of your identity and all of a sudden, I'm e-meeting everybody and I'm not even realising it. I'm like, it's so great to e-meet you. Or I like to, like, I think at one point I even... <laughs> I think I created a word. I think I said, e no, evite is a word. Don't, don't mind me. But anyway, so that bothered you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you did respond, though. Oh, I did, yeah. Graciously. And I'm, did you say it back? I did, because I was in a professional environment. And I can't just be like, you gimp. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So who fucking says that? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Denise, what about you? What about emails that kind of gets yeah. you goes? No, there's one line that I hate so much. Dropping you a line. You've definitely used that as well, I'd say. Oh, mm. Just hell. dropping you a line. What? Just fucking write the email. Just <laughs> dropping you a line. I hate dropping you a line. I know. Like yeah. it really actually sets me on fire. Oh my god. Yeah, I hate yeah. it. It's jargon though, isn't it? It's like it's office jargon that people say and it's buzzwords and some of it like translates into email and then you'll see it pop up the odd time in a meeting and you're just like, now I don't say that shit in meetings. I really don't. When I'm with people <laughs> nice to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great to be here now. I just, wanted to, e yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to drop you all a line <laughs> in person <laughs> and talk about it. But it is, like, without realising it, sometimes that can happen. Something I'm guilty of, and because I named and shamed the poached egg person earlier, I have to admit this. Um, <laughs> oh, it's really annoying, and I'm, I'm embarrassed by it. But basically, like, I'll send a lot of emails throughout the day, and sometimes, you know, people, for whatever reason, aren't able to respond straight away, and I get that. Sometimes I follow up with an in-person <laughs> conversation and be like, did you get my email? Like, it's... Face to face. Well, I have to because sometimes I'm under a deadline. Where so did you I... think the email went? I know where it went. It went to their inbox, but they just haven't seen it yet. And I never mark emails as urgent. I never oh, do God. that. I don't do that. I feel like 
sometimes it's urgent and it's for like, you know, an event. And it's like, well, that's not urgent. And if it's really urgent, get up and walk to the person because they're literally 10 feet away from you. But yeah, sometimes I'll send an email and then I will go and just talk to them in person about it. And I know that that annoys this person because she's said it to me on numerous occasions. <laughs> but I still do it. My yeah. favorite thing to say if they haven't replied is to kind of just, hi, whatever the person is, any update on this? Oh, I do oh, that. Yeah. Mark, That's you know? a good one. In I think fairness. it's a nice one. Yeah, well, yeah, I think yeah. you have to say any update on the below. And then because you're indicating, like I sent this to you four or five hours mm. ago and there was just a straight ignore. So any update on the below is a nice way to be like, yo. <laughs> I prefer to did you get my email because number one, yes, I did. You actually sent it to my inbox. So yeah. obviously I got your email. And two, they probably just didn't have time to reply. But then an update is nice. I think it's a nice way of putting pressure on someone to reply. Yeah. And then, I mean, there's the all at emails, which are just, that's a whole other world unto itself. Have you ever sent an all at? I am too afraid. Have you never? Same. I don't have a to do that. No. I've sent a few all ats in my time, mostly just to do with Girls With Goals when we were starting off. So like yeah. every week I was sending like, this is what's on the, I've stopped doing that. Nobody actually told me to stop, but I sensed it was time. To it's st just, <laughs> to it's, stop. If I made a mistake, it would haunt me for weeks. Oh. You know what I mean? In that like I sent the wrong thing to hundreds of people potentially like, <laughs> That scares me. Yeah, no, it's terrifying. I think the only all at emails I sent, and I wonder, are, is there any other companies like ours, is the cake in the kitchen one. And if anyone has a birthday in our company, an all at email goes out of a cake in the kitchen. And I just wonder if that's like a thing that's done in other I companies. I hate birthdays. I hate, like if we're talking about things in offices we hate, I hate birthdays. I hate the whole thing where everyone gathers around. I hate Can any I just kind say, of- Michael, I don't think other companies do birthdays the way that we do no. birthdays. And no, a former employee got on to me recently because I Instagrammed the entire thing because I wanted people to understand how long, just for anybody who doesn't know, in our mm. company when there's a birthday, um, we get a cake and, and just pretty standard, but everybody gathers around this one person and claps and like goes woo 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 and happy birthday comes on, but it goes on for an uncomfortable length of time. So your hands are literally yeah. raw. And then the odd person, like <laughs> usually an editor will like drift away because like they're an editor and they've got stuff to do, but like people are there yep. for like, like, I mean, I'm not gonna exaggerate, but six to seven minutes, I would say, clapping. Oh, even longer. You got a really long yeah, one. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah, that you was, got a really long one. It was okay one. for like a minute, and then I was sitting there being like, this is my life now, this is never going it's to never end. It's never going to end. It was, it was sleeping horrible. sleeping at night thinking of that clap. It was But I think some, some people deal with embarrassment in, in better ways. Like for me, I go really fucking red. Like, yeah. I, like I can't disguise how mortified I am, mm. and it just like, like comes off me, like the heat yeah. just comes out of me. Whereby some people look exactly the same and they're just like. I like when they lean into taking it. it I in. haven't got the confidence to do that. Yeah, yeah, like some people Instagram it while it's happening to them. I've never been able to do that. I'm just like, oh my God, make it I stop. I join in on the claps to just like get away from like the fear of everyone straight. <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Hiya." laughs> but yeah, I mean like birthdays in itself, absolutely mortifying in offices. The way we do it mm -hmm. should be illegal. Like yeah, it's, it's awful. And I know who started it as well. A former employee got in touch with me and was like, I started that. I was like, well, you're, you're the worst. I remember mm -hmm. there was like, three people's birthdays in one day and the clapping went on for so long because we had to, you know, get up, do the long it's clap It's usually around person. September because yeah. like... Sit down, get up to the babies. clap, sit down, do the clap. I remember uh, Rebecca that works at us saw me at one stage and I was like, this clapping, I'm standing up like this. I was like, my hands are so <laughs> sore, I can't go on. <laughs> well, this is the thing. And then as well as that, after, after that subsides, after 10 minutes of clapping and humiliation, and um, the all at pings in, so... And it's almost as if that person is like getting payback by just saying how embarrassed they are. Yeah. Yeah. And then they say, there's cake in the kitchen. Like we know the cake's in the kitchen. We know the cake's, we know in, the the cake's in the kitchen. I sometimes wait in the kitchen for the cake. <laughs> I'm I not a cake that. person. So I, I don't think I even ate cake when, I, when it was my birthday. I really? just don't, I don't get it. Were you yeah. dreading it the whole day? Yes. Did you know it was gonna come? Yes, and like Justine Stafford is beside me was getting up every so often. Every single time I was like, this is it. This is what it's going to happen. And Were then, you trying to figure out where the card was? Because that's a fun game to try and deduce. Well, no, it's where... always at the front desk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, nev <laughs> it's never anywhere else. <laughs> like, Sometimes it goes around. It does go around. Sometimes, Sometimes it goes around. Yeah. I love that you like just poorly hiding the card from other people, <laughs> as if as if they don't know what's coming. Like I knew all day that it was going to come up. Everybody knows. And I saw Everybody the knows. email come up, and me and Justine were talking, I just saw the email pop up on her screen, and I was like, oh no. Oh, and she was just like, worst. it's fine, it's fine, I'll just, we'll make it quick, and then it wasn't quick at all. <laughs> so. Yeah.
I think we should start, like if anything, if we're going to get anything out of this episode and about talking about this, I think we should maybe start a petition to stop this. Let's stop it. Let's not do it anymore. Mm. I hate it so bad. Nobody likes it. Yeah, I know. If you do it's like, like it, there's something passage, there's something so. weird yeah. going on if you enjoy that kind of humiliation. Yeah. Yeah, but also humiliating others as well. I don't enjoy clapping for other people. I Either don't do find I. That I fun. hate it. I hate yeah. it so much. I really hate it. It just makes my hands so sore and I'm standing there and I know they I'm don't like it. And clapping. I'm clapping. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it like Jesus. maybe I'm clapping too hard. Maybe it's my issue. Um there was another thing that came in which I thought was really, really funny, and this is uh, a Monday morning thing that pisses people off in, in offices and stuff. And it's basically spending the first half of your Monday talking about how your weekend was. And this is some, it's small talk essentially, like yeah. it's kind of catching up with people and stuff like this. But a lot of people were saying, I don't, like you don't care about how my weekend was really. And that level of small talk slash awkwardness should be eliminated from office spaces. I don't know, I think it's nice that people make that effort though. But yeah. is it an effort or is it just a, st like, does it just roll off your tongue as if, like, when we say happy birthday to each other without even, it's like, how's your weekend? No, I think it's it's nice to do that because otherwise, like, there are people that I worked with who just didn't speak to anybody. And it was yeah. like, yeah. that's more uncomfortable than someone saying what their weekend was like or whatever. Like, if you find it difficult to talk to people, mm. it's kind of good. Pe other people make the effort sometimes and yeah. then you can ask questions and it's kind of like you built up a, a nice civil relationship with somebody yeah. instead of just standing there in silence. I get that, I get mm. that. Denise, and I like think? to think that when people ask me how was my weekend, they actually care. I'm going to really take note This now. didn't come in from me. <laughs> this did not come in from me. I literally, anybody who knows me in, in the office, I, 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 I mean, like, how's your weekend? I'm like, yeah, I will, like... I will show you the people who message me these things. This is not for me. I enjoy talking to people about their weekends. And actually, I enjoy talking to people that I wouldn't necessarily talk to in the office, mm. like you, Denise, who I talk to all the time. Yeah. Like, if I see somebody, you know, in the office or in the kitchen that I don't normally see, I do want to know how their weekend is. Yeah, and I'm it's nice. Same. And sometimes they'll tell me something. Weirdly, though, they all always know how mine is because I like sh overshare on Instagram and stuff like that which same. is which is a whole other thing that I <laughs> that I need to deal with but it's not it is nice I like hearing things about and sometimes they'll tell me something that I was like wow that actually sounds yeah, like a great thing I, I do enjoy asking people how their weekend was okay so we can strike that off the list that yeah. doesn't annoy us generally no. talking to people <laughs> is yeah that's not <laughs> who's emailing that in like <laughs> I hate everyone <laughs> I don't care about your weekend I don't care about your birthday <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, meetings that drag on forever. This is something that uh, was sent in. And again, I think it's meetings about meetings, meetings that don't make sense and meetings that just go on forever. I'm not usually, I don't really partake in like really, really long meetings. So I can't really attest to that. But um, yeah, sometimes I would, I would understand how people would get frustrated if you're in a meeting and it's going on forever and nothing is actually being said. Get that. I don't think I'm the same as you. We'd mm. be in the same meetings. So yeah, again. yeah. <laughs> we do. We do I, be in the same meetings. We would be yeah. in the same meetings. Um, God, we spend a lot of time together. We do. But I find meetings grand. I think our meetings are always quick yeah. and done. But I know if you were like senior management or high up, you'd probably be in long, long meetings in boardrooms. I feel like movie style where just people are talking yeah. forever. Like when you see those movie meetings, like I don't think I've ever been in a meeting like that. No. Oh, I've been on, yeah, board meetings and stuff like that. Yeah, really? And it's kind of like, I like meetings. I like them because I feel important. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm important enough. Oh, me? You want me at this meeting? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I really, would be, Michael. Yeah. I, I love it. Really? I love the kind of formality of it. I love just kind of, yeah. I'm I enjoy the DOS from work, being in a meeting. That's exactly, yeah, that's what I like. Well, meetings aren't actually meant to be a DOS. I think they're meant to be like <laughs> an, important, or, yeah. an important structure of it. Um, that's interesting that you really enjoy meetings. Yeah, I, I, like I understand them. that, like, because I used to work for a tech firm as well. Right. Uh, just name it, for God's just, oh, sake. I, I used to work for Ancestry.com. All right, know I was... Oh, yeah, sorry. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, basically, they have things, they have stand-ups, right? Yeah. Uh, when they said that first, I was like, what the fuck is a stand-up? Are we going to have to tell a joke? Is that like a corporate <laughs> kind of, like, cool office thing? Like, but actually, it's a stand-up meeting. So, they have, uh, I think it's like once a week on a Tuesday or whatever, they stand up, and they're like, here's what happened this week. They, you know, pointed at everybody, and because nobody wants to stand for that long, everyone kind of gets to the point, you know? Wow. Okay. Which is okay. a very interesting way to do it. Because if you come in, you sit down, and I don't know, it takes forever for people to sit down and find seats and stuff like that. So yeah, I there's always, that. A, where's yeah. the, is you there a seat? Is there, do we have Imagine a, we being hungover, we'll though, one. and doing a stand-up meeting. Yeah. Oh, mm. I go to the toilet for that. 
Yeah. Mm. Um, another thing that kind of was propping up quite a lot, and I actually saw a good few articles on it as well, um, music in an office. So this is something, when I started here first, it was silent. There was no music at the time. Um, and I just remember thinking, oh my God, when I was walking through, because it's an open plan office, when I would walk through, I would think, oh God, are people like looking at me? Are they judging me? Do they, do they know? No, not at all. Like everyone's just had their headphones on. It was just quiet. But in a big open plan office, you know, I think the right decision was made that we would bring music in. Like it's a creative sphere that we're all working in and it kind of chills out. But it has created a whole other beast because a bunch of people have access to the music. Yeah. And let's be honest, you can't get one type of music that everyone's going to go... Yes, the tune. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I think having. A, Do you think music in an office in general is is a good thing or a bad oh, thing? Oh, definitely a good thing. Okay, definitely a good thing. But it should be a feckin' CD in a CD player. Having an Vintage. office Spotify oh, no. where everyone can change the song whenever they want is hell. Yeah, like we you we usually get like two two minutes, not even two minutes. We'll get like. 15 seconds of Ariana Grande and then it will get changed yeah. straight away. And I'm just like, just about to get into it. And no, then it's, I know the it's intro changed. of Seven Rings so well, I can yeah. sing it backwards. And then it changes. Yeah. And I swear to God, I don't know who's doing it. Yeah, it's so annoying. But it's as so soon annoying. as Ariana Grande comes on, it's changed within like four seconds. I'm against the CD thing because Why? that would mean we play the same songs over and over. Like and a we do that anyway. Like I used to work yeah. in... Yeah, yeah. I suppose we do, yeah. You really do. <laughs> but I, I remember that, that I used to work in Dunn stores when I was uh, a teenager and like that it would just be a CD on loop and it'd make you t you'd like tear your hair out yeah, eventually. Yeah, I have PTSD, I think, from <laughs> listening to Today FM. I used to work in a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, and we, like, <laughs> moves, moves like Jagger and, like, I think Wake Me Up by Vici, they were played, like, every 15 minutes. <laughs> so, like, whenever I hear the first, like, put the whistling on moves like Jagger on, like, literally, like, Vietnam, like, war flashbacks <laughs> to the Cash and Carry being, like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm back again. <laughs> oh, my God, what is going to be the music? That you like think I about think of maximum Ariana media. Grande. It might be Ariana Grande. Probably, probably Ariana Grande. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. up there. But she's only up there for like two seconds, and then oh, she gets two changed. Seconds. She gets kicked yeah. off the stand. Actually, you know that horrible song by Sam Smith. Oh yeah. Which one is that now? Dancing with the Strange. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a lot of wild youth. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of wild youth. They performed at our Christmas party. We love them, but mm -hmm. we have Christmas party flashbacks as well as <laughs> maximum media flashbacks. PTSD, and like PTSD by 10. whenever they come on, and everyone's kind of like bopping and then just going, oh, like oh. shuddering yeah. at, yeah. at, the, at the thought of what happened. Sadly bopping away. Yeah. Um, oh. Music, music, and uh, I think is a really good thing. I think we should probably control the, the Spotify things, but headphones was something that a few people messaged me in about, as in like they sit beside people who wear headphones but they have their headphones so loud oh. that you can actually hear all of the music that's going on. Yeah, I, I, oh, that would annoy me, I think. I think it would annoy me. It annoys I think that me would that annoy people me are wearing headphones in the first place because you can't talk to them. I actually mm. just find it really... Do you know what I mean? Really? I, like, yeah. in, in offices in general, you don't think... Because in media, people, like, need to wear headphones. Ooh. Like, you're editing and all this kind of stuff. But, like, you think that people shouldn't really wear headphones in general unless you absolutely need them. Yeah. I don't oh, know. That's interesting. Maybe I'm just really annoying. I find <laughs> like, it really strange that people are listening to their music in their ears while like doing work. I would find that I so can't. distracting. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah, like I can do it sometimes if I'm researching and stuff. Researching, but if, yes. if I'm writing, absolutely no. not. And obviously if I'm editing, no as well. But yeah, some people like can't write without music yeah. in their heads. There's people though. at our table that wear earphones in the whole time that they're writing. I'm like, yeah. how do you do that? I get so confused. Like sometimes if I'm being totally honest, I don't have anything on. But it's just like a little bit of a <laughs> headphones wise, <laughs> headphones wise. But I feel like sometimes like earmuffs. <laughs> but like headphones can be used slightly as an invisibility cloak. And sometimes I feel like if I have my headphones on, nobody will come up and like That's ask me true, anything yeah. or like drag me into a meeting. Although I know you love that, but like you know what I mean. Like sometimes I just want to be left alone, and the headphones do act as a barrier to I'm the just real world. Me yesterday, I remember I had a pen in my hand. And I was tapping in front of you so you'd listen to me. I 100% was yeah. listening to music though um, at that point. Um, I run out, like run through things. I think we actually have too much to talk about. I don't know if we're going to get through it. But temperature, 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 temperature in an office, right? Too hot, too cold. I have never been comfortably warm. Never have I nope. <laughs> in my office? I, th I, th I th that's so. I think that's a, a female thing, not to be sexist or whatever. I but was like, wondering when that was. It's always no, genuinely like, like the temperature <laughs> could be a thousand degrees, and there would be a woman sitting behind you in a scarf, and it's like, what is wrong with you? Like, 
<laughs> if you I don't through, get it. If you walk through our office, like there's sports Joe t-shirts, there's Joe t-shirts, there's Adops, like jumpers yeah. or whatever. And then it gets to the her and we have like two shawls <laughs> and parkas <laughs> and blankets. veils and <laughs> like woolly. We have actual blankets on our table have, on our chairs that we wrap yeah. ourselves in and we write. Like homeless people, like, oh my god, we're so bad. But um, I don't maybe it's colder where we're sitting. But I don't like, think it is though. I, I think there actually is a draft, but we talk about this so often, it's actually embarrassing. We're like, it's that window. <laughs> I swear to God, but the thing is, sometimes we're sitting at our desk and we will point you guys out and we'll be like, look at Michael, he is wearing a t-shirt. Yep. He's mad. The How can he walk around in a t-shirt? Yep. The amount of times I've... Paul Duncan, in a t-shirt, oh, all always. the time. Yeah. The amount of times I meet people in the Bolton. kitchen, I'm like, are you not freezing? They're like, like, no. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and then sometimes if, I think if we wear enough blankets, eventually, like the head of finance will walk down to us <laughs> and kind of be like, just check the radiator and be like, yeah, the he heating's on there just to that like be sure that we're not living and working in like horrific conditions. Have we a thermometer anywhere? Actually? I don't think so. Yeah. No. We need to get one. I worked somewhere uh, that was like a converted lab mm. uh, and it was kind of underground. So the temperatures were really, really high a lot of the time. Yeah. So it was really bizarre that like, we'd sit in there and it'd be like 36 degrees or something. Cool. And we were all just like gasping and it yeah. was awful. Now, I have to say, the summer in our office, it gets really, really warm as well. Well, last summer, anyway, it was, uh, it was pretty mildy. But um, we don't have a thermometer, I don't think. No. Is that what it's called? Thermostat? Thermometer? Thermometer, uh, thermometer yeah, I oh, guess. Right, okay. yeah. Um, I'm not being rude. I'm not looking at my phone. But I want to get to some of the things that came in because I said that I would. And they're really, really funny. And people are absolutely enraged so um is there anything we've kind of talked about everything but oh my god people talking loud on the phone that literally just came to me can't stand it when people yeah. are pacing up and down talking loudly on the phone no i don't know do i even notice that yeah. Yeah. Oh, for god's sake phone. <laughs> it's just, it's just going to be me i'm just going to be like absolutely dragged for this episode 100 percent um okay so rather than just leaving cups on her desk my colleague i'm not going to name anybody because gdpr my colleague leaves dishes from all her meals on the desk between us bowls congealed oh. with remnants of her porridge from breakfast oh, plates with bits of whatever she's had for lunch and the smell of this food leftover concoction makes my stomach turn every afternoon oh please keep me anonymous at the end Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, yeah. Um, does that bother you when people are eating beside you? Because sometimes I leave Weedabix out on my desk without realising I think that's gross. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like cereal or anything, anything that can rot or sit there, do you know, I'm not a fan. Do you know, yeah. A plate with crumbs is fine, but like anything like liquid, I think it's... Ugh, it no. is pretty disgusting. There was like literally four or five people then saying, people, one person shouted, people microwaving fish. Like, we get it, leaving raw fish in the microwave or eating fish at all in the office, like, whoa. I mean... I had prawns yesterday, is that bad? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that's terrible. Prawns don't smell. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, this is a good one. This is kettle politics, right? Because we have to wrap up soon. When someone yeah. who hasn't boiled a kettle uses all the hot water before the person who boiled gets a chance to use it and doesn't refill and reboil. Can I just take that again? When mm. someone who hasn't boiled a kettle uses all the hot water before the person who boiled gets a chance to use it and doesn't refill and reboil. This has happened to me before. I have gone to the kitchen, I've boiled, gone to the bathroom while it's boiling because for some reason our kettle takes... 45 years <laughs> to boil. <laughs> yeah. When I've come back, there's a, li a little like group of people that have gathered. They've all helped themselves to my boil and then they don't <laughs> refill and reboil and I'm just left there. Did like you boil it... enough water in the first place? No, I probably boiled enough for me, but I was the only one in the kitchen well, at the there time. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you should always boil enough for at least a few other people. So the that's my fault then. Yeah, it's it's a, yeah, yeah. Is that, again, our kettle <laughs> takes 45 years to heat. So if you fill it to the top, it takes longer. Yeah. Does it, why does that bother you? <laughs> because I have work to do. I take, think. A, take a break. <laughs> Just take a time. Sit five. in the kitchen watching the kettle. Yeah. Um, this is a funny one that came in. Um, men, now, this is, I'm not going to name anybody, but anyway. Men who take the newspapers that are provided for all staff to the toilet for their morning poo. Who does that? <laughs> who does that? <laughs> and who then, is doing and that? And then put them back on the tables in the kitchen. <laughs> Like, this, God, I'm not like... making this up. <laughs> this, this came in from somebody who doesn't work with us, but men who take the newspapers that are provided for all staff to the toilet for their morning poo and then put them back on the tables in the kitchen. So I'm presuming that this person... Ew, like, yuck! Why are they providing newspapers, though? And 
<laughs> Why? Some paper to the toilet. Yeah. Like we know you're going to have a poo. Like, well, I don't know. Yeah, I we're a digital publisher, thank God. <laughs> so nobody can take the site to the but toilet. But if people are bringing but... their laptops into the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh my God. <laughs> Reading your own work while you take a number two. A bit weird. Weird flex. Just poo particles flying all over the place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. I've never seen that or, or done that. I mean, like, pooing in general in the office is... Uh, <laughs> toilet situations yeah. are... Weird. They're tough. They're tough for everybody, you know. But yeah. um, let's not talk about that. I no. don't think. Uh, <laughs> I was really scared what was coming next. I was like, okay, poo chat. Okay, constant clearing of throat and phlegm rank. And then I actually responded to this one and was like, that is really gross. And then he responded again. I've had people on the other end of the phone ask what that noise was. That's how loud he is. This episode will enrage people. And I was like, yeah, it probably will enrage people. So I don't know. People clearing their throat and stuff doesn't bother me. But I suppose if somebody is beside me doing it constantly, kind yeah. of like humming, yeah. if somebody was to hum along to a song, fine. Like if it's just a really good song and they're enjoying it. But if someone was to hum beside me all the time, I would probably find that incredibly irritating. I mean, coughing, I don't mind as long as they, like, they fully cough. I don't know if you've ever worked with anyone who's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't actually cough properly. You're like, God, just do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, you know, because then you don't have to sit through them just doing that all day. Yeah. I'm the you kind know? of person that would say to them, I'd be like, are you sick? You know, like, you know, just to bring it up and like, <laughs> fucking go and like cough outside, you know? If it, Like now, obviously, if they're sick, you know, mm. cough. But like, if you're doing mm, 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 all day, I'd be like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Lads, I think we're going to have to wrap it up now. But I do want to say as well that this has been incredibly cathartic for me yeah. I believe yeah. like mm. I feel like I've gotten some stuff off my plate even though most of these weren't from me and I want to say that for the record these were definitely sent in by people the two of you I feel slightly judged because I feel like you're going to be like watching me now yeah I just I feel like you shouldn't be eating tuna in the office oh and come on if I see it again I will make a complaint is that yeah. the one thing that <laughs> we're going to take I didn't yeah. think it was that big a deal tuna I'd say if you googled is it okay to eat tuna in the office there would be a large... A hard no. A hard you sat no. beside yeah. me when, when we ate that, when yeah, I was it eating. It doesn't, like, technically bother me that Thank much. You. But the idea of your She's tuna plate... She's a pescatarian. Plate. She only eats yeah. fish. Yeah. See, so, yeah. Do you eat it in the office? I had prawns yesterday. I thought oh, prawns. Yeah. I'm sorry, I think prawns are worse than tuna, to I be fair. I do not think so. It was in a stir-fry. You had a raw tuna packet <laughs> squidged it onto your plate. That is like cat me. food. Cat <laughs> food. It does look kind of like dog food, yeah, because it comes in a packet. Yeah. No, the, the thought of your tuna plate and dishes make me feel sick. The thought of you eating tuna is fine. Fine, I'll work on the tuna. Mm. Thank you. I'm going to eat yeah. it. If Regards. you could eat it off some kind of paper or... <laughs> your cat bowl. Tin foil. <laughs> <laughs> so we should all remember as well, just never put coffee in the microwave as well. Never put takeaway cups in the microwave, for Christ's yeah. sake. Mm. That is 100% a fire hazard. And also just remember that you work with these people every single day. So if there's a few little quirks about them just embrace them it them. embrace yeah. it yeah. yeah be nice ask how the weekend was and probably presume that people are bitching about you behind your back because that happens as well oh one final thing uh, awkward leaving has that ever happened to anybody like whether it's in a lift or if you're like leaving the office and somebody that you don't know that well is leaving at the same time and then you end up walking towards like the oh same God. the same yeah. kind of public transport and you're just like I don't really know I hate walking through the office because you do this weird thing where you're like hunched or like you've, you've forgotten how to walk yeah, properly so, so you're kind of like you know, because you, you're afraid of everybody looking at you. So you're kind of like, I need to look like a normal person. But like, Michael, absolutely not. I told you I was really no, neurotic. No, that happens to me too. Yeah. And I'm so you of, think about how you're walking oh, yeah. all the time. Mm. No. And when you think about it, it gets really difficult because it, it's kind of like so you have to remember so many different... This happens to me all the time, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you, I've never thought about how I'd my walk I'd be walking through the office and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so hunched. Okay, wow. Like, And I would straighten up so much. What is weird though is that now that you say that, I do note that I do look at everybody who walks whenever yeah. anybody yeah. gets time. up. All the time. Like if you walk, like you sit kind of a little bit away I'm looking at where you're going. Not, I'm not judging your walk or anything, but I'm just like, there he goes. Like yeah. I literally yeah. just, I note that somebody is yeah. walking away. That's all that happens. <laughs> so yeah. you should, you're not neurotic. You should absolutely I think sh about it. I should be afraid of everyone yeah. judging the way I walk. Yeah. So 
<laughs> Never judging. Um, so tell us before we go, tell us about the show Big Dirty Fridays and how people can watch it and what they can expect from it. I've watched one of the episodes. It's really funny. It is. It's really bizarre. I enjoy uh, <laughs> it. I enjoy it. So yeah, it's it's yeah. It'll be I would say every second Friday okay. uh, for the foreseeable. Uh, until, until management so finally decide, right, that's too weird, get rid of him. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's really bizarre. It's kind of, it's news-based. Yeah. So it's kind of similar to the things I've been doing on Twitter, mm. but there's a visual element there. And that's thanks to Gary Carroll, who works um, on effects and stuff like that, and he's an yeah. absolute genius. So um, I've been using a green screen, and it's all, you know, yeah. just bizarre. Just it's really weird. It's incredible. Where do you get, like, do you have, like, do you sit down and write or does it has like these characters kind of come to you over a certain amount of time? Yeah, I, because like, what's your weatherman called? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm. So Malcolm outside. Malcolm outside is yeah. his name. Like that in itself, it it sounds so natural and normal when you when you talk about it on the show because you're like, and now we're just going to go over to Malcolm outside. But like that's pretty funny in in my head. I'm just like, wait, how did he even think about? I think Malcolm was a character I'd used a few times okay. uh, for audition tapes. So I had really? him do okay. He auditioned for The Apprentice and he auditioned for, I think, Love Island. Oh. Uh, so and people outside. were kind of like, Love I like Island. him. You yeah. know, they, yeah. they, they kind of really liked him. I was like, I need mm. to find the right vehicle for him. I just thought the weather worked. Yeah. So, um, but every, everyone else is going to be this person and their name is a thing they do. So, right. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get all that on Joe and all the social channels and also watch out for Michael on Joe's Instagram and stuff like that because he pops up yes, quite a lot. Yes, and I'm at Big Dirty Fry on Twitter. At yeah. Big Dirty Fry as well. And Denise, tell us about what's coming up for you. Yeah, plenty of writing. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Colin Farrell next week. Stop. Which is really, oh really exciting. You get the best interviews. I like, obviously, some... I get to interview people like you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Which is amazing. Yeah. But you get to interview incredible. Yeah, and that's I get for to do Dumbo? Dumbo, Disney's <gasps> Dumbo. Yeah, the live action remake. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Have you interviewed him week. before? I haven't. So, it's my first time meeting Colin as well. Wow. So, it's very exciting. Very do you get nervous when you talk to, like, big Hollywood A-lister people like that? Or are you just, like, meh? A little bit. Yeah. When I'm in, we're, we get brought into a press room usually when it's over in London. And when I'm sitting there and they're like, you'll be up next, I do get a, an, an overriding feeling of kind of like, shit, like yeah. I'm meeting someone that I was just watched on TV. So yeah. yeah, you do get a bit of that. But the minute you meet them, in fairness, everyone that I've interviewed so far has been very, very lovely. But and they a, make you feel at ease. It's a big part of their job to be yeah. nice to you, though, as well. Yeah. Like, that's the yeah. thing that when I hear people, and I've spoken to you about this before, and I've spoken to Rory Cashin from Joe as well about this, about when people like really famous Hollywood A-list celebs have been assholes. And I'm just like, but... Like, they do these press rounds for junkets and stuff like that to promote their movie. It's a part of the contract. It's a part of the millions that they're getting paid for yeah. it. Like, why would you be bothered to be an ass for those, like, 10 minutes that you're talking to someone? I know. I think I think it's really upsetting as well when you do hear that people it's are like professional that. when you hear that about mm. somebody and it taints your opinion of them. Yeah, and I think it's just that they're, like, trying to get true journalists and they just don't care. Yeah. But it's also, like, I might have gotten up at 6 a.m. to fly over to be here to meet you for five minutes. So, please, like, we both... This isn't good for either of us, yeah, you know, yeah. in that kind of sense. But, um, no, in fairness, everyone that I've met has been so lovely and they all get up and they give you a hug or they shake your hand and straight away when that happens, you're like... Oh, yeah, you okay. just feel at ease. And um, are you allowed to take selfies with them or no? No, no pictures. No pictures. Never any pictures. Never any pictures that unless sucks. it's like pre-organized that mm. you're going to get some photo content mm. for the site. But yeah. otherwise, no. And have you ever just asked sneakily for a picture? No, I'm always afraid that I'll come across like a fan, and I really want to try and keep it professional. So I actually, that is good. Don't I listen actually, to me. That's I actually a much don't. better way to but deal with it. One of the best tips that I ever got when it comes to interviewing a celebrity, if you're nervous, and it was actually from a former employee that worked here is the first question you ask, make it really short so that they answer and it gives you time to settle yourself. So I always do that. I'd never go in and be like, hi, John Cena, your film was really good, blah, 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 blah. I just ask a really short question first so that they answer and then I go, okay, breathe. Aww. And then I can ease into the next question. That's a good piece yeah. of advice. Yeah. I look forward to it. And also I've heard that Colin Farrell is brilliant in interviews. Exactly, so, so like, have I. So he I'm doesn't excited. have any bad reputations, which is good. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Well, thank you so much to Michael Fry and to Denise Curtin for joining us this week. Thank you as well to Orla Hopkins, who was with us earlier on. I'm Neve Marr, and we will chat to you next week.